Lucchese Crime Family The Lucchese Crime Family, part of the five families that control organized crime in New York City, is an Italian-American mafia group. They call themselves the Lucchese Borgata, using Borgata as mafia slang for a criminal gang, originating from a Sicilian term denoting a close-knit community. In some cases, members from other crime families may colloquially refer to Lucchese family members as Lukes. Established in the early 1920s, the Lucchese crime family saw Gaetano Reina as its initial boss until his murder in 1930. Tommy Gagliano took over during the Castella Marais War, leading until his death in 1951. Referred to as the Gagliano crime family, they maintained a low profile, focusing their activities in the Bronx, Manhattan, and New Jersey, and dominated the garment industry and expanded the family's control over various criminal enterprises. Tommy Lucchese, who served as Gagliano's underboss for over two decades, succeeded him. Under Lucchese's leadership, the family rose in prominence, becoming a formidable force within the commission. Collaborating with Carlo Gambino of the Gambino crime family, Lucchese exerted influence over organized crime in New York City. Early History The Lucchese crime family's early roots can be traced back to the Morello gang in East Harlem and the Bronx. Gaetano Tommy Reina, initially part of the Morellos, established his own family in East Harlem and the Bronx around World War I. As the family's leader, Reina strategically avoided the Mafia Camorra War for control over New York City, focusing instead on dominating the home ice distribution business throughout the city. In the early 1920s, Reina became a prominent Prohibition-era boss and allied with Joseph Masseria, the most powerful Italian-American crime boss in New York. The Castella Marie's War erupted in 1930 as Masseria clashed with rival Sicilian boss Salvatore Maranzano. Learning of Reina's potential betrayal, Masseria, in collaboration with Reina Lieutenant Tommy Galliano, orchestrated Reina's assassination on February 26, 1930. Masseria's demand for a share of Reina's criminal profits led Reina to consider aligning with Maranzano. Following Reina's death, Masseria disregarded Galliano, who anticipated assuming control of the Reina gang. Instead, Masseria installed his underling Joseph Fat Joe Pinzolo as boss, infuriating Galliano and Tommy Lucchese. In response, Galliano and Lucchese covertly switched allegiance to Maranzano. In September 1930, Lucchese orchestrated Pinzolo's murder in a Manhattan office building, allowing Gagliano to take charge of the Reina family. On April 15, 1931, Masseria's assassination marked the end of the war. The Two Tommies Following Masseria's murder, Salvatore Maranzano convened a mafia meeting declaring himself the new Capo di Tutti Capi, boss of all bosses, of the American Mafia. Maranzano proposed a peace plan, dividing the Sicilian and Italian Mafia leaders into 24 organizations, or families nationwide, each electing its own boss. In New York City, Maranzano reorganized the Italian-American gangs into five families, led by Lucky Luciano, Vincent Mangano, Joseph Profaci, Galliano, and himself. Galliano was granted control of the old Reina organization, with Lucchese serving as his underboss. Despite Maranzano's efforts, Luciano and others were unwilling to accept his leadership. Learning of Luciano's discontent, Maranzano hired a gunman to eliminate him. In a preemptive move in September 1931, Luciano, aided by Jewish assassins provided by Mayor Lansky, orchestrated the murder of Maranzano in his office. This marked Luciano's ascent as the most powerful mobster in New York. Luciano retained Maranzano's family structure, but abolished the boss of bosses role, establishing the commission as a governing body responsible for regulating family affairs and resolving disputes. Initial commission members included Luciano, Galliano, Bonanno, Profaci, Mangano, Al Scarface, Capone of the Chicago Outfit, and Stefano Magadino of the Buffalo family, with Luciano as the chairman. Although technically democratic, the commission was effectively controlled by Luciano and his associates. 
During the 1930s and 1940s, Galliano and Lucchese guided their family into lucrative sectors such as the trucking and clothing industries. When Lucky Luciano was imprisoned for pandering in 1936, a rival alliance assumed control of the commission. This coalition, consisting of Mangano, Banano, Buffalo crime family boss Stefano Magadino and Profaci, wielded influence over organized crime in America. Recognizing his vulnerability, Galliano was cautious not to oppose this new alliance. Galliano, a reserved figure who shunned the media and street presence, preferred conveying orders through Lucchese and a select few allies. In contrast, Lucchese served as the family's public face, executing Galliano's directives. In 1946, Lucchese represented Galliano at the Cosa Nostra Havana conference in Cuba. Galliano maintained such a low profile that little is known about his activities from 1932 until his retirement or death between 1951 and 1953. Lucchese era. After Galliano's death, Lucchese assumed the role of boss, appointing Vincenzo Rao as his consigliere and Stefano Lasalle as his underboss. Continuing Galliano's strategies, Lucchese transformed the family into one of the most profitable in New York. He asserted control over Teamsters union locals, workers' cooperatives, trade associations, and engaged in rackets at the newly established Idlewild Airport. Lucchese expanded family operations in Manhattan's Garment District and related trucking industry activities around New York City. Establishing close ties with influential New York politicians like Mayors William O'Dwyer and Vincent Impolitari, as well as members of the judiciary, Lucchese secured support for the family. Throughout his leadership, Lucchese maintained a low profile and ensured the well-being of his associates. In the 1950s, Lucchese orchestrated a narcotics trafficking network alongside Santo Traficante Jr., the boss of the Tampa crime family. Frequent meetings between Lucchese and Traficante Jr. in New York City further solidified their collaboration. Upon becoming boss, Lucchese allied with Vito Genovese and Carlo Gambino in their struggles to control their respective families. The trio orchestrated a plan to take over the Mafia Commission by eliminating family bosses Frank Costello and Albert Anastasia. In a failed attempt on May 2, 1957, Costello survived an assassination, prompting his retirement in favor of Genovese. Later, on October 25, 1957, the Gallo brothers from the Colombo family murdered Anastasia, facilitating Gambino's ascent as boss. Following Anastasia's demise, Lucchese and Gambino turned their attention to removing their former ally, Genovese. The 1957 Appalachian meeting of mob leaders diminished Genovese's standing within the commission. With the support of Luciano Costello and Meyer Lansky, Genovese was arrested on drug charges in 1959. In 1960, they supported the Gallo brothers' rebellion against Joe Profaci, the boss of the Profaci family. Viewing the conflict as an opportunity to seize rackets from the distracted Profacis, Lucchese and Gambino backed the Gallos. After uncovering a plot by Joseph Bonanno to assassinate them, Lucchese and Gambino utilized the commission to strip Bonanno of his leadership role. This strategic move triggered a war within the Bonanno family, strengthening both the Lucchese and Gambino families. In 1962, the alliance between Gambino and Lucchese was further solidified when Gambino's oldest son, Thomas, married Lucchese's daughter, Frances. This marital union strengthened the bonds between the two powerful families. Lucchese, maintaining a quiet and stable life, continued his influential role until his death from a brain tumor on July 13, 1967. Lucchese bequeathed his family with considerable power in New York City, holding a strong presence in East Harlem and the Bronx with approximately 200 made members. Expressing his intent for longtime capo Anthony Corallo to succeed him, Lucchese, who was imprisoned at the time, designated another veteran capo, Carmine Tramunti, as acting boss until Corallo's release. Tramunti and the French Connection Around the time of his interim leadership, Carmine Mr. Gribbs Tramunti faced health challenges. 
As the acting boss with Anthony, Tony Dux, Corallo in prison, Tremonti was expected to maintain authority until Corallo's release. During his tenure, Tremonti encountered various criminal charges, ultimately being convicted for financing a significant heroin smuggling operation known as the French Connection. This operation played a major role in distributing millions of dollars worth of heroin along the East Coast during the early 70s. Prior to the French Connection trial, the confiscated heroin was stored in the NYPD property or evidence storage room. In a daring scheme, criminals stole hundreds of kilograms of heroin valued at $70 million from the room and replaced it with bags of flour. The theft was discovered when insects were found consuming the so-called heroin. The full extent of the scheme remains unknown, but authorities suspect the involvement of corrupt NYPD officers in aiding the thieves. Several conspirators, including Vincent Papa, later assassinated in prison in Atlanta, Georgia, Virgil Alessi and Anthony Loria received jail sentences. In 1974, after Tramunti's imprisonment, Corallo assumed leadership of the family. Corallo and the Jaguar. Following Carmine Tramunti's incarceration in 1974, Anthony Corallo assumed leadership of the Lucchese family. Hailing from the Queen's faction, Corallo, nicknamed Tony Ducks for his knack at avoiding criminal convictions, embodied the mold set by Lucchese. Corallo had a deep history in labor racketeering, collaborating closely with Jimmy Hoffa, the Teamsters president, in the 1940s and 1950s. He also maintained strong connections with the Painters and Decorators Union, the Conduit Workers Union, and the United Textile Workers Union. Corallo appointed Salvatore Tom Mick Santoro as underboss, overseeing all labor and construction racketeering operations in New York, and Christopher Christy Tick Fernari as the reputed conciliaire. Under Corallo's leadership, the family thrived, particularly in narcotics trafficking, labor racketeering, and significant illegal gambling activities. Known for his cautious approach, Corallo avoided discussing business during sit-downs, suspecting FBI monitoring. Instead, he utilized the car phone in his bodyguard's Jaguar during drives around New York to conduct business conversations. Salvatore Sal Avellino and Agnello, Neil Migliore, served as Corallo's chauffeurs during the 1970s and 1980s. Expressing a preference for the New Jersey faction, Corallo reportedly inducted and promoted Anthony Tumac Asaturo and Michael Mad Dog Tachetta. They were entrusted with leading the Jersey crew, which purportedly controlled a significant portion of loan sharking and illegal gambling operations in Newark, New Jersey during that period. In the early 1980s, the FBI successfully planted a bug in Anthony Corallo's Jaguar, capturing extensive conversations about various mob activities, including illegal gambling, labor racketeering, drug trafficking, and murder. Corallo, along with heads of the five families, was arrested and tried in what became known as the Mafia Commission Trial. On December 16, 1985, Gambino crime family boss Paul Castellano was murdered without commission approval. In response, the Genovese and Lucchese families collaborated to plan John Gotti's murder. The alliance led to the killing of Gambino underboss Frank DeChico, but attempts to assassinate Gotti failed. Corallo, along with Santoro and Fernari, faced charges in the Mafia Commission trial in 1986. Realizing the imminent decimation of the Lucchese hierarchy, Corallo acknowledged the likelihood of convictions and lengthy sentences, prompting him to select Anthony Buddy Luongo as the acting boss in the fall of 1986. However, Luongo mysteriously disappeared later that year. Anthony Corallo's final choice for the Lucchese family's leadership was Vittorio Vic Amuso, the capo of Christopher Fernari's former crew. Allegedly, both Amuso and another long-standing protege of Fernari's, Anthony Gaspipe Casso, were considered for the position. Evidence suggests that Corallo initially favored Casso, but Casso persuaded him to choose Amuso. Amuso officially assumed the role of boss in January 1987, 
following the sentencing of Corallo, Santoro, and Fernari to 100 years in prison. In 1989, Amuso appointed Casso as his underboss, granting him substantial influence over family decisions. Corallo and Santoro passed away in prison in 2000, while Fernari was released in 2014. The Iron Fist of Amuso and Casso during the late 1980s, the Lucchese family experienced a period of significant turmoil under the leadership of Vittorio Vic Amuso and his formidable underboss, Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Heading the family's Brooklyn wing, they initiated one of the most violent reigns in American Mafia history. Both Amuso and Casso were deeply involved in labor racketeering, extortion and drug trafficking, and their records included numerous murders, Notably, they were fierce rivals of Gambino crime family boss John Gotti and staunch allies of Genovese crime family boss Vincent Chin Gigante. When angered by the murder of Gambino boss Paul Castellano, Corallo and Gigante conspired to eliminate Gotti. The contract for the hit was given to Amuso and Casso. On April 13, 1986, a car bomb targeted Gambino underboss Frank DeChico, resulting in his death but Gotti narrowly escaped. This failed assassination attempt triggered a prolonged and complex tension between these three crime families, marked by numerous reported deaths on all sides. During the late 1980s, Vittorio Vic Amuso began demanding 50% of the profits from the Jersey crew, led by Anthony Acciaturo and Michael Tachetta in New Jersey. Refusing Amuso's demand, the New Jersey leaders faced retaliation when Amuso and Anthony Gaspipe Casso issued a notorious Whack Jersey order directing the elimination of the entire Jersey crew. The crew members, fearing for their lives, skipped a meeting in Brooklyn and went into hiding. Subsequently, Tachetta and Akaturo were put on trial in 1990. Amuso and Casso found themselves implicated in a case involving the installation of thousands of windows in New York at inflated prices. In response, both went into hiding in that same year, designating Alphonse Little Al Darko as the acting boss. Over the next few years, Amuso and Casso remotely governed the family, orchestrating the execution of individuals they perceived as troublesome, often seen as rivals or potential informants. Their actions led many within the Lachese family to question their rationality and judgment. Following the Whack Jersey Order, a series of poorly executed attempts on family members suspected of being informants unfolded. Ironically, these failed hits led several family members to actually become informants. Vittorio Vic Amuso ordered the assassination of Capo Peter Fat Pete Kyoto, who, along with Anthony Gaspipe Casso, oversaw the Windows case operation. Remarkably, despite being shot 12 times, Kyoto survived. When Amuso further authorized hits on Kyoto's wife and sister, violating long-standing rules against harming women, Kyoto chose to turn state's evidence. He provided extensive information about the entire Windows operation, which eventually controlled $150 million in window replacements sold in New York City. Amuso's approval of the hit on Anthony Acciaturo, who was on trial in 1990, also led to Acciaturo cooperating with the government. The series of mishandled hits and betrayals resulted in a growing number of family members turning state's evidence. The planned executions reached as high as acting boss Darko. Enraged by the failed hit on Kyoto, Amuso arranged for Darko to be killed at a Manhattan hotel. However, this attempt also fell apart when Darko detected a man hiding a gun in his shirt, then slipping it into the bathroom. Recognizing the classic setup for an assassination, Darko fled for his life and chose to surrender to the authorities to protect himself and his family from the increasingly erratic demands of Amuso and Casso. He became the first boss of a New York crime family, acting or otherwise, to become an informant. Mafia Cops in 1994, Casso revealed that two highly regarded New York City police detectives, Louis Epolito and Stephen Caracappa, served as hitmen and informants for him during the 1980s and early 1990s before their retirement. 
Over their combined 44 years with the NYPD, Epolito and Caracapa committed murders and leaked confidential information to the Lucchese family. Between 1986 and 1990, they participated in eight murders and received $375,000 in bribes and payments for carrying out murder contracts on behalf of Casso. Casso utilized them to exert pressure on the Gambino crime family by eliminating several of their members. This was part of a strategy by Casso, along with the imprisoned Amuso and Genovese crime family boss, Vincent Gigante, to remove their rival John Gotti from the scene. In April 2006, Epolito and Caracapa were convicted of murdering Heidel, Nicholas Guido, John Otto Heidel, John Doe, Anthony Delapi, Facciolo, Lino, and Bartholomew Borriello on the orders of Casso and the Lucchese family. They were sentenced to life imprisonment. Acting bosses Defeed and Crie. While in prison, Amuso regained control of the family after Anthony Casso was imprisoned. Amuso appointed Joseph Little Joe Defeed as his new acting boss. Defeed, overseeing the lucrative garment district racket, reportedly earned substantial monthly income. Placing Stephen Crea in charge of the family's labor and construction racketeering operations, Crea significantly boosted the Lucchese family's earnings from these rackets. Throughout the mid-1990s, Amuso, with his allies Defed and Crea, maintained control of the family from prison. On September 6, 2000, Crea and seven other Lucchese members, supervising construction sites with Capos Dominic Trichello and Joseph Tangora, were arrested and jailed on extortion charges. After Crea's imprisonment, Conciliere Louis Lou Bagels, Didone, took control of the family. However, Didone's tenure was short-lived. Defed, fearing for his life, became a government witness after his release from prison. Alphonse Darko's testimony in September 2004 further contributed to Didone's conviction. Ruling Panel With the arrest of acting boss Louis Didone in 2003, Imprisoned boss Vic Amuso established a three-man ruling panel to lead the family. The panel included Capo's Agnello Migliore, Joseph Di Napoli, and Matthew Madonna, bringing the family's influence back into the Bronx. In February 2004, a New York Post article reported that the Lachese family comprised around nine Capos and 82 soldiers. In March 2009, Another article in the New York Post mentioned that the Lucchese family had approximately 100 made members. On December 18, 2007, two members of the panel, Joseph Di Napoli and Matthew Madonna, were arrested, along with New Jersey faction capo Ralph V. Perna, soldier Nicodemo Scarfo Jr., and others. These arrests followed investigations, such as Operation Heat, revealing that the New Jersey faction controlled a $2.2 billion illegal gambling, money laundering, and racketeering ring based in New Jersey and Costa Rica. On October 1, 2009, the Lucchese family faced two separate indictments charging 49 members and associates with bribery and racketeering. The first indictment, leading to the arrest of 29 members and associates, accused Joseph Di Napoli, Matthew Madonna, and acting capo Anthony Croce of running operations generating nearly $400 million from illegal gambling, loan sharking, gun trafficking, bribery, and extortion. The second indictment from Operation Open House charged 12 more Lachies mobsters with bribery, accusing acting capo Andrew DeSimone and others of bribing NYPD detectives and sergeants, posing as crooked cops to protect illegal poker parlors. On November 18, 2009, family members were indicted under Operation Night Gallery. Captain Croce, soldier Joseph Ditello, and his brother Frank Ditello faced charges related to loan sharking and bookmaking operations conducted at the bar Night Gallery on Staten Island. Madonna and Crea. After the ruling panel was disbanded in 2009, Matthew Madonna assumed the role of acting boss, and Joseph Di Napoli became the new conciliere. In late 2009, with the expiration of parole restrictions, longtime underboss Stephen Crea rejoined the family's leadership. On January 16, 2013, 
the FBI arrested 29 members and associates of the Genovese, Lucchese and Gambino crime families on racketeering charges related to their involvement in carting companies across New York and New Jersey. The charges involved control over waste disposal businesses, dictating which companies could pick up trash in specific locations and extorting protection payments. In June 2013, the New York FBI office consolidated its efforts, reducing the number of agents investigating the five crime families to 36 agents, divided into two squads. Squad C5 now investigates the Genovese, Bonanno and Colombo families, while Squad C-16 expanded its focus from the Gambino family to also include the Lucchese family. On May 31, 2017, 19 members and associates of the Lucchese crime family were indicted and charged by the FBI and NYPD with various offences, including racketeering, assault, attempted murder, armed robbery, murder, firearms, fraud, witness tampering, money laundering, illegal gambling, narcotics and contraband cigarettes trafficking. The charges dated back to at least 2000. Lucchese leadership members Matthew Madonna, Stephen Crea and Joseph DiNapoli were among the accused. Lucchese associate Terence Caldwell and soldier Christopher Londonio were implicated in the shooting and murder of Michael Meldish, a former leader of the East Harlem Purple Gang and Lucchese Bronx-based hitman on November 15, 2013. Other charges included attempted murder, drug smuggling, and a skimming operation involving the construction of a New York City hospital. The U.S. Attorney's Office announced in May 2018 that they would not seek the death penalty for certain defendants, including Crea, Madonna, Londonio, Stephen Crea Jr., and Caldwell. On January 4, 2019, Joseph Ditello received a 14-year prison sentence after pleading guilty to conspiracy to commit racketeering, including the attempted murder of a witness, narcotics trafficking, and collecting debts through the threat of violence. Stephen Crea Jr. pleaded guilty to racketeering and murder conspiracy charges on August 20, 2019, and was later sentenced to 13 years in prison. On November 15, 2019, Matthew Madonna, Stephen Crea, Christopher Londonio and Terence Caldwell were convicted in White Plains Federal Court of murdering Michael Meldish. On July 27, 2020, Madonna, Londonio and Caldwell were sentenced to life in prison for the Meldish murder. On August 27, 2020, Crea was sentenced to life in prison, along with a $400,000 fine and the forfeiture of $1 million current leadership. Despite being in prison for life, Victor Amuso officially remains the boss of the Lucchese crime family. On March 27, 2018, Lucchese soldier Dominic Capelli and nine associates were arrested in Operation The Vig Is Up, the largest loan sharking case investigated by the United States Attorney General's office. Over 47 individuals were identified as victims of exorbitant weekly loan rates averaging over 200% per year. The accused operated from New Rochelle, New York and the Bronx, also running an illegal bookmaking operation generating over $1.5 million in annual wagers. In a separate indictment in April 2018, Lucchese soldier Anthony Grado and associate Lawrence Fat Larry Trenise were arrested for forcing a doctor to prescribe over 230,000 oxycodone pills from 2011 to 2013. Grado had ordered a peer to stab the doctor during a visit. Both men pleaded guilty on April 5, 2018 and were sentenced to 12 years and over three years in prison, respectively. In October 2018, associate Vincent Zito allegedly involved in loan sharking, was found murdered at his home in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. His brother, Anthony Zito, had been jailed for extortion in 1971 and was a known associate of current Lucchese boss, Vic Amuso. In May 2019, government witness and former Lucchese soldier, John Pennessy, testified in a trial, revealing the current leadership of the crime family. Pennessy stated that in 2017, Imprisoned boss Vic Amuso sent a letter appointing Michael Big Mike DeSantis as acting boss, replacing Matthew Madonna. 
If the Bronx faction refused to step aside, Amuso had approved a hit list targeting a captain and several members of the Bronx faction. Penacy also revealed the Luques family's seven crews operating in different locations. Law enforcement identified Patrick Patti Della Russo as the new acting underboss and Andrew DeSimone as the new conciliaire. On December 16, 2020, soldier John Perna pleaded guilty to aggravated assault on the husband of Dina Cantin, known from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Perna was hired by Thomas Manzo, Cantin's ex-husband, in exchange for a discounted price for his wedding reception. On September 13, 2022, five Luque's members and associates, including soldier Anthony Villani and associates James Quick Kumutsos, Dennis Filizola, Michael Platinum Prano, and Louis Tucci, Tucci Jr., were indicted and accused of operating a significant and long-standing illegal gambling operation. The charges they faced included racketeering, money laundering, illegal gambling, and attempted extortion.